Hello. We're here to read you part of a very exciting story that was written a long time ago, almost a hundred years ago, in a country that doesn't even exist anymore called Yugoslavia. It was written by a guy called Aleksandr Vucho and his friend helped him, Dusan Matic. And the story is called The Fine Feats of the Five Cockroach Gang. Podvizi pet petlicha. The story is made up of six songs. You don't think so? And we're going to read from the first song. No, no, no. The first song goes like this. First song in which the main characters of this tale are described. From the window of the grocer, where a pyramid of chocolates reaches high up toward the sky, and the barber's soapy odor, as the barber shop sits waiting for the next beard to come by, while out front its sign is swinging, like a sunshine yellow plate. This street here is very crooked, for it's truly like a river. As along its course it wends, it has charted its own route, past the houses and the taverns, by the shops, all the way around the town till the corner where it stops, where there looms walls tall and mute, the blackened sides of an old house and under leafy shadows, a young lady's institute. Most days in the afternoons, that's the spot they gather, five boys, Five age mates, five aces. First, the kid who goes by Crocker, when called for, can scale any wall. When he squints hard with his left eye through the blackest of eclipses, he'll even spot a spider web. That's how keen his vision is. Even though he works real hard, the life he lives is awfully poor. For his savage master, Lazar, a locksmith, old and mean and scarred, who drowses lazy all day long, flogs him hard. And while the dead dull ABCs try to teach the kids at school that jacks of all trades win the day, when Lazar counts his gold by ounce, putting money in his drawer, his apprentice hears him roar. No one really learns a trade until he's suffered by the blade. A tradesman's useless with no tools. Why should I pay you, little fool? Why give you warm shows, coat and hat? when even Vapa, little rat, could stay alive without all that. The second boy is Big Gulp Nori. He goes by Nor for short. A friend in need he'll always save, against all odds, no matter what. Harder than an old tin can, lighter than a ship at sail, patient as a fisherman and faster than a raging gale. Not a day or night goes by with Nori feeling full. In the textile factory, where machines the live long day are busy weaving wool, little Nori is required to scrub the floors, although he's tired and never given a mouthful. Yet every day, when work is done, when the hungry evening gapes, a wondrous wish inside his chest lights up his insides with its shape. He'd like, just for a little while, real fast, to become a great big whale. And like a tram car or a swallow, across the hills or swamps to wallow, up to the factory at last, and finding there his savage bosses, chicken breasts in night shirts, heaving, hop, in one gulp, they'd get swallowed, and at last he would be even. Third comes Johnny, tender child, doesn't like tip cat or ball. Let those who want to run around, and in the baking summer sun, let their noses get well browned. They can tussle, they can tumble, fast and fleet. He's not worried about keeping clean and neat. He would rather doesn't matter. Watch the airplanes flying high, flying weightless through blue sky. But when, after the long day, finally comes deep dark night, then within him there awakens a certain enigmatic might. And unlike kids and most grown-ups, Johnny has no need to peek out from underneath the sheets or to tremble, what's that moving, what's approaching all around? He has no need, since for years now, he and all the vampires have known each other and been friends, as have the mute ghosts, ghouls most evil, fluttering moths, and nighttime beetles. 
Number four within the troop has the following attributes. The second that he spots a tree, in him a crazy monkey wakes, and in two or three light leaps he scrambles to the very top. There his lemon yellow head peeks out and makes the thick leaves shake. Whether it's a small pear tree or the tallest forest pine, he has no fear of highest heights. And from spots where no BB gun could ever hope to reach, he never thinks of taking fright. Instead, he dangles, swings at angles, as though he were tied to the branch with knots of arms made fast like twine. Even though his name is Mita, no one knows this name of his, and the whole town calls him Bulgy. Because he always God knows why, when he's asked about any question, he bulges out his eyes like mad and scowls hard. As if a wild beast suddenly had seized him with a cry, or right there and then he'd seen a crystal goblet crashing down like thunder from clear sky. The fifth and final cockerel, who goes by Captain Joe, is full of courage, very strong, and like granite stone he's ready from his head down to his toes to take the whole task on alone. The captain's mind is like a razor, and his brain's elastic, too. When he slaps, it's hot as wildfire. His disposition burns bright blue. Whatever dire thing might occur, and might affect our little cockerels, our Joe won't be slippery slimy. But like a stubborn man from China, he will stop all saboteurs, even when things come to blows, and the bruises start to show. He'll keep up the gang's bright glory and ensure that the fine deeds of this plucky group of friends are never overgrown by weeds. So we'll stop there. I hope everyone has enjoyed the introduction. And um, it's a teaser. You can read the whole story sometime soon. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye.